Mike Phillips down here at Auto Geek Show Car Garage and I'm just finishing up claying the hood of this Toyota RAV4. The next thing I want to do is I want to show you the brand new Cyclo Model 5 Variable Speed Dual Head Orbital Polisher. So let me finish this up and we'll take a closer look. The Cyclo Tool Company has been around since the early 1950s and they've just introduced their brand new Model 5 which is a variable speed version of their legendary dual head polisher. Now this new model comes with a dial right down here which lets you adjust the speed of the counter rotating counterbalance heads. Let me attach a couple pads and I'll show you that feature. Okay, now it's conveniently located right here where you can grab it with your thumb or your forefinger. Now watch how slow this will turn on. Now, you can bring up the speeds as you need it. For example, if you're spreading out a product first before you want to really get in there and start ruining the swirls, you can start out slow and then as you're polishing, start to bring the speeds up. Pretty cool new feature. Now let's take a look at some of the accessories and then I'm going to show you how to remove the scrolls out of the hood of this RAV4. Here at AutoGeek, we carry a complete selection of foam pads for the new Cyclo Model 5 Dual Head Orbital Polisher. Now that includes the very aggressive yellow foam cutting pads, the light cutting orange pads, two polishing pads in blue and green, and the very soft white foam pads for applying a wax or a paint sealant. Now to remove the swirls today, I'm going to be using some swirl removers from the Pinnacle XMT series. Now these are rated for 1 to 4, with 4 being the most aggressive and 1 being the least aggressive. For today's demonstration, I'm going to start out with the number three intermediate. I'm going to use that with these orange pads I've already put on the polisher. Then I'm going to switch over to the green polishing pad and finish out with the number one ultra fine swirl mover. Now, you can use any products that you like with the Cyclo. What's important is the techniques I'm going to show you. Now before we start, I'm going to show you how I would approach carving or slicing up the hood of this car because you only want to tackle section by section. So let's grab some tape and I'm just going to show you how I would approach buffing out the hood of this car. Every car you work on is going to vary in the shape and design of the panels and it's important to take this into consideration when you go to buff out the car. Now for example, there are body lines on the hood of this that run from the back all the way to the front of the hood on both sides and it's a good best practice to not sit here and buff on top of a body line or on an edge, for example where the fender meets the hood. So I'm going to use this green painter's tape to just visually show you how I would break up a car into sections before I start to buff it out. Then I'll pull the tape off because I wouldn't leave them there if I was actually buffing out the car. I'm just doing this to show you how I would break up this hood into sections. So I want to take and put it on this body line right here. There's another body line right here. And what this has done is give me this long narrow section here that I can probably tackle in one, is one section. Now this section here is the same length but it's a lot wider. So I'm going to break this up into two sections. Kind of like that. Same thing over here. And again, as I'm buffing this car out, I would buff out this section, then this section, then this section, then this section, then this section, and continue breaking the car up into sections as I work around the car. And again, you can't tackle too big of an area at one time because clear coats are pretty hard. So you just want to kind of shrink the size of your work area down. Now I'm going to pull the tape off. And I'm going to start out and I'm just going to buff out this section. I'm going to leave this tape here so when we get done buffing out this section, we can look at the difference between before and after how we remove the swirls and then finished out to a, a brand new show car finish. So let me pull the tape off. Then we'll get started. So I've already clayed the paint. Clay removes above surface bond contaminants, so now it's silky smooth. The problem is all the swirls and scratches. As I inspect the paint with my Brinkman Swirl Finder light, it just looks horrible. This paint is completely filled with swirls and scratches. So let me share with you the techniques for using the Cyclo Polisher to effectively remove the swirls and restore a crystal clear show car finish. Now, for the first step, I'm going to use the Pinnacle XMT Series number 3 Intermediate Swirl Mover. The important thing to remember is the tips and techniques I show you to use the tool will work with any quality product. So, what I want to do is I'm going to start by shaking this. And I want to take and prime my pads. Now priming the pad, that means I'm going to take and I'm actually going to push some product over the entire face of the pad so when I start polishing, no part of the pad is dry. And what that means is 100% of the surface of the pad is going to work for you as soon as you turn that button on. So that would look kind of like this. 
And uh, it's kind of messy, but it's not too bad. So you just want to take and put some product on the pad, then take your finger and then just kind of spread this out and into the pad. And just get about 90% coverage. You want to get as much as you can on there. I'll do this side over here real quick. And again, just take and uh, push this into the pad. And this is called priming the pad. And again, it just makes sure that 100% of the surface of the pad is going to work for you as soon as you turn that button on. Okay, now that I got it primed, I'm gonna go ahead and add just a few more pea-sized drops. So I have some product actually on the pad that's uh, going directly onto the paint to go to work for me. Now I want to bring this over here and before you turn it on, you always want to take and put the pad in contact with the paint. And this is the cool feature now, is because this is variable speed, I can start this out slow, spread my product around over the area I'm going to work, and then after I get my product spread out, then I can bring the speed up to the high setting, the five or the six, because that's where you want to be for removing swirls. And one thing I want to show you is the technique. Now a lot of people would hold this kind of perpendicular selves and run this back and forth and then side and side and that'll work. But what actually helps is to actually kind of tilt it a little bit, then run it back and forth and side to side and you'll get more uniform coverage from these dual orbiting heads. So let's take a look at this. And we'll spread the product out. Okay, now that I've got this product spread out, I'm going to go ahead and bring my speed up and start moving these swirls. Then after you've made about five or six passes over that entire area, and by pass I mean you've went over the section once, when you go over it another time that's another section pass, a third time over that area would be a third section pass, five to six section passes, then you want to take and wipe off and inspect the results and see if you've actually removed the swirls. If not, then you can reapply some product and try again. So let me get some microfiber towel, we'll go ahead and wipe this off and take a look. And it looks like we have 100% defect removal. Now, if I still had swirls and scratches, then I could either reapply the product, or if need be, I could get a more aggressive pad or a more aggressive product. So, a lot of times you want to start out with the least aggressive product and then do some testing, find out what's going to take to remove the swirls, and then adjust your process according to what the results you're getting. This, by the way, would be called my test spot. So, let's go ahead, I'm going to switch pads over. We're going to go to the number one fine swirl remover. As an option, if you really want to double check your work, you can mist on a solution of about 10% water to alcohol. And what this will do is it'll strip off any polishing oils and reveal the true and accurate results. 
And you can do this just by missing on the paint and then again wipe it off with a nice clean soft microfiber towel. After you remove all the swirls and scratches you don't want to risk putting more back in. And again I'm just going to grab the swirl finder light and just inspect. And again it looks, it does look like 100% defect removal. And that was the goal. So let me go ahead and put on the polishing pads. We're going to switch over to the XMT series ultra fine polish. Again, I'm just going to take and prime these pads by applying the product directly to the face of the pad, working it in. And again, that's just so when we go ahead and turn the switch on, 100% of the pad is going to work for us right away. Now this is the number one ultra fine swirl mover. And what this is going to do is going to, even though this looks pretty good, it's going to actually refine this to a higher level, increase the gloss and the clarity. Okay, so I'm going to turn this variable speed back down to spread the product out. And then after I spread the product out, I'm going to start working the product again in a back and forth overlapping motion. Probably make five to six section passes. We'll pull it off and inspect and see how it looks. So that looked just like this. Okay, I've got the product spread out and at that low speed it's real easy to do. Now I'm going to bump that speed back up. Run the five, five and a half setting there. Then turn the switch off, make sure the pads have stopped spinning before you lift the tool off the paint. Now when you're doing the first step, moving the swirls, you want to give it some firm pressure. As you work through the process and move to a less aggressive product, you can bring the pressure up a little bit because you're not trying to remove such deep defects, you're just trying to maximize the gloss and clarity. Let's come down here and wipe this off. Ooh, that looks good. One of the things I like about the Cyclo is it's really well balanced, so it's easy to hold on to and it's very low vibration, so it doesn't shake you all over the place. Okay, now again, I want to take my swirl finder line, I just want to inspect my results. And the paint, the clear coat, this top layer here is so clear now, I can easily see the metallic flake. It just, it's what we call, it pops. It's just so easy to see now. It brings up the full richness of color, I can see the flake. And again, if you want to at this step, you could use the IPA. Usually after the first step, if you've removed the defects, then you're not gonna be putting any in. As long as you're using high quality products, you can skip it. That's an option you can choose. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead, now that the paint's done, I wanna seal it. For that, I'm gonna use the Carnuba Finishing Glaze. I'm gonna switch over to that really soft white foam polishing pad or finishing pad I showed you at the beginning of the video. So let me do that real quick. Okay, and again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prime my pad and I'm just going to take some of the uh, XMT Carnuba Finishing Glaze. And I'm just going to work this into the entire face of the pad and, and the reason for this is not so my pad starts going to work for me, but I've created a, such a clear and a swirl free finish over here that when I bring these pads down and they're spinning, I don't want any dry portion of pad rubbing or spinning against the paint. I want it all lubricated with this wax. So that's why you want to prime your pad when you're applying a paint sealant or a wax. So the entire face is moistened so it's, it's not dry against the paint, it's lubricated so it'll, it'll slip. Then I'm going to just take and put a couple pea sized drops on here for this small little section here. And for this, I don't really need a high speed because I'm not trying to remove defects. So I'm going to bump my speed down to about the four setting. Okay, and don't turn it on until it's in contact with the paint. And for this setting, all you really need to do 
is make two or three passes over each square inch. And what you're trying to do is you're just trying to work that wax into the paint to whatever level you can and give a nice, uniform, even coverage. And again, this tool is so easy to use. I mean, it's very well balanced and I just need to basically help guide it, holding the handle back here, having one hand up here just to sort of guide it back and forth. Turn it off after the pad stops spinning. Safe to lift the tool off the paint. Now I'm going to take a break here for a second and let this dry to a haze. Then we'll uh, wipe the wax off, pull the tape off, and check out the before and after results. The Carnuba finishing glaze is dry to haze. Before we wipe it off, I just want to go over some tips and techniques for using a microfiber towel. Now, you should always use the cleanest, highest quality microfiber towel you can obtain. And you always want to take and fold it four ways. Now, what this does is it gives you eight sides to wipe with. It also gives you some cushion to spread out the pressure from your hand. And this is important because after you polish the paint to high gloss, you don't want to risk putting any finger marks back in. So you want a little cushion there. Now, I'm going to just take and place this directly on of the wax. Make a little shiny spot there as I pulled the wax off. Now it's on the cloth. And then from there, what I want to do is I just want to take little tiny bites, little swipes, okay? I see a lot of people when they wipe their wax off like a madman and you risk putting tally marks in the paint. At this point, you just want to be ultra careful with it because as you can see, we've just created a show car finish. Okay. Then I'm going to do a thing I called the final wipe. Now after I've removed most of the wax, take your microfiber, fold it to a fresh clean side like I've done here, and the idea is just to come down and wipe really nice and slow. And what you're trying to do at this point is remove any trace residues, and by moving the towel slowly over the paint, you're giving any residues a chance to transfer from the paint onto the towel. If you move your hand at light speed, like I see some people do, you're given that residue nanoseconds to transfer from the paint to the microfiber towel. So for that final wipe, and that's what the technique's called, is the final wipe, just a nice, slow, gentle wiping action. And now let's pull the tape off and see the results. A little stubborn piece there. Okay, now I'm going to come down. I'm just going to real gently wipe off any residue where that tape was. And we'll bring the camera down here, pull out our swirl finder light, check out these results. Wow, that is beautiful. And it's easy to do. You don't have to spend years and years and years mastering the art of polishing paint when you're using a tool like the Cyclo Model 5 variable speed dual head orbital polisher. It pretty much does the work for you. All you got to do is just use good technique, choose the right pad and the right product, and then let the tool do the work for you. There we go. And uh, after this step, the next thing I would do is of course I would go ahead and tackle the next section, overlap a little bit into the section I just did, Finish that section, move to this long section down the center between these two body lines, and then again, just continue working around the car. So detailing a car by machine is always just a matter of working section by section until you have the whole thing done. And that's it. That's how you use the new Cyclo Model 5 Variable Speed Orbital Polisher. There, I switched back over to my light orange cutting pad because, well, I gotta finish up this car. If you want more information on the brand new Model 5 Variable Speed Cyclo Polisher, visit autogeek.net and on the left hand side there's a navigation panel. Select Shop by Brand and then click on Cyclo. You can always call us at 1-800-869-3011 where our friendly staff is always ready to answer your questions. And don't forget to swing by our fun and friendly discussion forum at autogeekonline.net. That's where you'll find me answering questions and posting new how-to articles. I'll see you on the next edition of Auto Geek's Show Car Garage.